Hey traders, checking in on the stock market today. We started with some gap down opens, but bulls were there buying that dip. At this point in time, this consolidation is very similar to the previous weekly consolidation we've seen the last few times over the last few months. We have to be watching for the clues that tell us this is something different. Let's look at what those clues are, and then we'll look at an individual name that is extremely crushed for those very aggressive traders out there looking for some volatility. Get ready for it. So the S&P 500 futures chart, this is the chart we watched on yesterday's video where we had our resistance line. This was our uptrending support line. And currently with today's candle, we are holding it with very high volume. And shout out to the people that were asking about volume yesterday. And yesterday, the daily volume doesn't mean much to me. And the reason is the news reaction, the FOMC minutes reaction was at 2 p.m. So there were only two hours where we were watching the market responding significantly to that fundamental information. And all of the previous trading that day was boring and very low volume. So looking at the daily volume as a total doesn't give us much insight as far as the complete picture. So the daily volume yesterday on individual tickers doesn't mean as much to me. The daily volume today, fairly impressive of bulls buying that gap down open. We have to see follow through from here. Looking at SPY on the hourly chart, we have our low of today, high of the bounce, hourly high or low. We tried to change the hourly trend into the close, but we failed to do so. So the bulls must break the high of today, tomorrow. And the hourly trend change will be confirmed. And then we're looking back up towards the high of 447.11. We had our double bottom of support. And as I've been saying over the past couple of weeks, this is the most important level for me as far as a daily high or low for SPY. There's a couple other little support levels that we broke, but not a clear pivot. And that is now a triple bottom. That is the level. And you could view this as a head and shoulders. So again, bulls aren't out of the woods. If we change the hourly trend bullish and see some bounce and then roll over and break this triple bottom, then we know further weekly consolidation is coming. But that is the level and it's 435.99 triple bottom. So we got followed through from the signal. The signal at the end of the day yesterday in the last 15 minutes was all major sectors at the low of the day at the same time. And we had a pretty solid gap down open this morning. I wasn't very confident going aggressive buying the gap down open this morning. And the reason was pre-market. Pre-market cooled off hourly RSI levels on a ton of individual names. And that opened the door for the possibility of bears controlling the morning. When I'm going aggressive buying a gap down open, the hourly RSI is crushed and there's no bounce in pre-market. And so I know that even if the bell rings and we drop hard first thing, that I am very confident an oversold bounce is going to take place in the morning. But when you bear flag or potentially bear flag, you bounce in pre-market, cool off all RSI levels, that makes me less confident and it makes me less aggressive. So buying the gap down open definitely would have worked out in this scenario, but I was not as confident that the bulls were going to be able to control the morning. So it's all about for $35.99 from here. Tomorrow, the bulls must confirm the hourly trend change. Real aggressive bears will be top fishing the all-time high and using that level as a stop, hoping that we confirm a daily downtrend into further follow through. But again, at this point in time, every weekly consolidation holds the weekly EMA 12, and we're watching for clues that this time is different because we've now seen it. Essentially, we'll call it one, two, three, four, five, six distinct times, and this would be the seventh, and we essentially have to confirm a daily downtrend if we're going to lose that weekly EMA 12 with any kind of confidence. So tomorrow's a pretty important day as far as how we head into the weekend. Sentiment is real. So we're either going to see a green day and bulls are going to breathe a sigh of relief and say, ah, oh, everything's fine into the weekend. Or we're going to head back down towards the low of today and bulls are going to say, uh-oh, do I need to be worried here? QQQ, daily downtrend confirmed. Again, we're not seeing a ton of follow through. The weekly is a potential bull flag. As long as 352 holds, the weekly uptrend remains intact. We've got the VIX, weekly falling wedge. Look at that upper wick now. So how tomorrow goes is going to have a distinct impact on the size of the wick on this pattern. Keeping in mind that, you know, if we close just above it, this is the kind of pattern where I just adjust my line a little bit and I'm still hitting all these resistance lines. So it's unlikely unless, you know, it was, we have a drastic bear drop tomorrow. 
I'm just gonna adjust this trend line and it's gonna be up to next week to either convincingly break above it or to reject and stay within this pattern. So I don't anticipate that tomorrow is gonna give us information on the VIX as far as this is for real or it's not. And look at these price levels, 2509, and we pulled back under that level. So as far as price levels, still lower highs. Financial sector, still scouting a daily higher low. The bulls are still struggling to do so. We have been unable to change the hourly trend in favor of the bulls since this pullback started. And we would need to see, actually I take that back. You could call this an hourly trend change two days ago where we bounced, we opened and pulled back and held the low of the day and then broke resistance. So you could have called that an hourly trend change and it was just a lack of follow through. We're watching the pattern of a lower high every day over the last four days. And again, from the video yesterday, if the bears are going to prove it to us, I need to see weakness in XLF and in XLV. And I need to see XLF confirm a daily downtrend. And here's XLV leading the way again. It's just fine coming off the all-time high. And we have to see all of our major sectors showing weakness if we're going to have broader market fear. MSOS. So bears still in control here, dropping down to a lower low. And I'm not going to cover the MJ sector every day but I'm going to be keeping a bigger picture eye on it for the next couple months as we head into the boating season and when it starts to, if and when it starts to show me a shift in momentum, I'll highlight it and say, hey, I'm paying extra close attention now, but for now, I just want it to get as beat up as possible. Just flush for the next month and get extreme. The ideal opportunities, the most significant opportunities that you find in markets are when an individual name due to news or a sector due to news or whatever reason is weak already. And then the broader market adds fear on top of that and correlations drop us to extremes. And the USMJ sector did that. We'll go to a specific name. COVID did that for the USMJ sector. So here was weakness pre-COVID you know, dropping from 1373 to 918 and then we're just trading sideways and here's COVID getting things absolutely crushed and then we go up 500%. So that's, no, way more than that. We went up 1000%. So that is the most significant opportunity when things get extreme, which brings me to my next point. I'm watching Baba. If you are not in your fourth, fifth, eighth, 12th year of trading, you're not trading Baba. You're watching and observing and you can practice, but this is for advanced traders. Right now, there is maximum fear in these Chinese names. And swing trading has massive risk and reward opportunities. So this is an extremely volatile name. And we can see that we are in free fall and we are dumping. I love extreme fear. As an oversold bounce trader, that's when I get excited. So we are crushed on BABA. And RSI levels tell us to pay attention, but we need a trade game plan that is a lot more than just RSI levels because news can make RSI levels get overextended, which is currently what's going on in BABA. But just the law of supply and demand that when we see a point reached where there's nobody left to short BABA and there are no longs left to flush out of their position, all you're going to have left is dip buyers and short locking in profit. And that's when you see significant bounces. So we've seen, I mean, you can just go back on Baba historically and see how many times massive fear, a huge gap down straight into a 15% bounce. Double digit drop straight into over three days, double digit bounce. So I'm anticipating Baba is going to have an easy double digit bounce. Easy being once the bottom is found. What is not easy is timing that bottom. And there are people right now that did not use stop losses that thought BABA was cheap and they have positions at 180 and they are down over 10% at this point. I'm not gonna be that person. I'm just watching it for an opportunity. And I traded it this morning and I'll go over exactly what I mean in just a moment. Dollar, breakout. So you could call the dollar a cup and handle. The retracement on the daily was definitely a little bit more than what the bulls ideally wanted to see. But that's a cup and handle on the daily and it's a cup and handle on the weekly. Higher low and they're just spitting images. And remember natural gas did the exact same thing. Cup and handle on the daily, confirming a cup and handle on the weekly. 
I'm now paying attention to this pattern. That's twice now in this year that I've seen that. I've never seen it before, or at least never recognized it before. But the next time I have a longer term cup and handle shaping up and a shorter term cup and, hand, cup and handle within it, I'm paying real close attention. So the dollar is now a monthly uptrend. Next resistance, 94.30. So we'll look at 94 psychological as the next resistance level. And the daily uptrend is going to be our guide. Anything above 92.47 is a daily higher low. And again, with this breakout on the dollar, gold is holding on real well. This is a potential daily bull flag still. The four-hour downtrend is not getting much significant follow-through. I'm waiting on a call here. Dealing with flood stuff. So daily is looking for a bull flag. And again, positioned extremely well comparative to the dollar. If you showed me just the dollar and didn't tell me anything about gold, I'd say, uh-oh, gold's probably down near its recent lows. And that's obviously not the case. Oil following through with the weekly downtrend. So we have a lower wick of bulls trying to bounce. Just seeing a daily oversold bounce trying to shape up. Four-hour trend change has to go for the bulls. Right now, it's still a potential four-hour bear flag. So really, we have a confluence of signals right now where oil bear break is a point in favor of broader market bears. Dollar bull break is a point in favor of broader market bears. Gap down buying today is a point in favor of broader market bulls. Uptrend of XLV, point in favor of the bulls. So really the next couple days are going to be very key and it will be extremely notable to me if the doll, if SPY, I should say, bounces, fails the all-time high and confirms a daily downtrend. That will definitely get my attention significantly. For Baba, headed into the morning, we had a low of pre-market, 164.91 as a key support level. Gap down open, extreme RSI levels. I'm watching, can I make a play off that support? If that support breaks, there's nothing nearby. That's the only level I have to go off of. The first five minute candle, we flushed down and bounced right off that level. That's enough for me to say, great, I'm in. Gap down open, extreme RSI. Let's get a small risk, or I should say a low risk bottom fish play. And I market bot, 165.49. I like being in risk-free trades. We then bounced around and grinded 165 and held it another few times. But as soon as we bounced enough to get over 166, I sell half of my position. So right now my break even is under 165. So I can put my stop under 164.91, the low pre-market and be in a risk-free trade. I cannot lose. So that's how we started. I then went aggressive because I thought this is going to be our bounce. And the reason I thought that was because the broader market was bouncing and getting followed through. And I mentioned how I was not confident on the gap down open in the broader market because of the pre-market bear flags, but we got bounce follow through. So we had that and we broke the high of the day on BABA. So a new high of the day, I then entered on a five minute higher low aggressively. And I added more position. I've got my half and I added even more than my initial half back in the low 166s. And I said, okay, well, if we drop down and break 165 from here, it'll be a day loser. And if we get follow through, it'll be a multiple day winner. So we then broke the high of the day by 16 cents, zero follow through. At that point, I'm gone if we break 165.89, which we did out the whole trade. And confirming a five minute trend change, trend change with zero follow through when you're in a weekly, daily, an hourly downtrend is a big red flag that you're just setting a lower high on a longer term time frame. So very quickly bailed, probably had a tiny loss there because I went aggressive with my ad on at 166s. It was three times the position of my 164s break even. And then from there, didn't really see the bulls prove anything for the rest of the day. And I am interested and I'm going to be looking to be aggressive here. I'm going to be looking for this to be my trade of the month, to be honest, but it has to be the setup that I want. So if we gap down tomorrow, I'm going to be using larger position sizes and doing the exact same thing, putting myself in scenarios where if I'm wrong, it's a couple day loser. And if I'm right, I want to see a week maker plus. If we open higher, it's not the ideal setup for me. And I'll say, all right, well, a higher open, I have to wait for hourly consolidation and then try and make an entry playing off of a support level. So how we open is going to have a significant impact and 
the Chinese market trades overnight here in the US and that has a significant impact on whether we open higher or open lower. So I am very interested in a BABA daily bounce, but again, you have to have discipline and experience because newer traders try to play a bounce like this, they don't stop out and they get beat up in a big way. So we'll tune in on BABA next week and see how Friday goes, but that's what I'm keeping an eye on. As far as the broader market, SPY bulls have to confirm an hourly trend change back in their favor, but we know we're keeping an eye out for a daily lower high to potentially be the result. Solid bull volume, bears have to prove it at this point. Bears proved it for an hour of trading yesterday after hours, or I should say yesterday into the close. And that's it. And they proved it overnight a little bit, but that's not enough. We need regular hours trading, lots of bear volume, lots of supports taken out, this triple bottom is our short-term guide. I appreciate you watching. Thanks for the likes and subscribes. Thanks for the comments on the flooding. I was planning on doing an update video and asking for some suggestions, but after about five hours, and shout out to Chart Guys Jungle Funk for helping me in the trenches, five hours of repairing the creek and the driveway, and it just downpoured again, and the creeks just ran again. That flood that you all saw, it only lasted about an hour staying that high, and then it went back to completely normal, but it just erased probably two-thirds of the work we did today. So away she goes. So I'll post a video asking for some tips and some suggestions next week, but it's just a bunch of hassle. see the different ages that's one family don't know who these guys are they're slightly older but they hang out in the strawberry patch taking dirt baths got all the potatoes out here curing got to keep them out of the sunlight and keep them nice and cool for soup making Watch Fantastic Fungi on Netflix. Definitely some changes in the pond since this dude moved in. All the lily pads used to be here and he ate most of them. So less lilies, there were too many last year. This burrow is somewhere right there in that corner. But too many lilies last year, not enough this year. And there's also less bullfrogs this year. And they generally eat plantation but just interesting to see how the ecosystem is affected by just one little rodent. Or actually, there's probably a couple of them, but... Observations.